Hi Bobcats! In this video we are going to look at predicting uh, the stable ions that different elements will form. Our objectives include predicting whether a particular element will gain electrons or lose electrons when it forms an ion, to calculate the charge of an ion based on how many electrons and protons it has, and to turn that around and go backwards and calculate the number of protons and electrons based on an ion's symbol. Ions will be formed by adding or removing electrons until a stable configuration is reached. Usually, but not always, this configuration will be a noble gas configuration. So we're going to reach an octet of electrons. Just as an example here, let's take a look at the hydrogen atom, just because it's small and only has one electron to, to worry about. Um, the hydrogen atom can either lose or gain electrons. So let's look at what happens when it loses that one electron that it has. If we remove that one, all we have left is that proton, which has that positive charge. We're going to call this a hydrogen ion, and to write the symbol for it, we write an H with a superscript or an exponent of a plus. We also could add another electron to it, and in that case, hydrogen is going to have two electrons. And when hydrogen has two electrons, um, it now has the same electron configuration as helium. And uh, so that is how hydrogen reaches that noble gas configuration. In this case, it's not an octet, it's a duet. The main group elements uh, if we look at their Lewis dot structures, it will give us some sort of indication of how it's easiest for these elements to achieve an octet of electrons. If we look at the alkali metals in group one, um, they have a noble gas core in their electron configuration plus a single extra valence electron. So it's easiest for them to get that noble gas configuration or an octet by losing that one electron. And in fact, that is true for all of the metals. So the metals, when they form ions, are going to lose electrons. So if they lose electrons, they're going to end up with more protons than electrons. And so that's going to make them positive or cations. On the opposite side of the table, if we look at something like the halogens in group number seven, they are one electron short of an octet. And so it's easiest for the nonmetals to achieve a noble gas configuration or an octet um, by gaining electrons. Since electrons have negative charge, when they pick up extra electrons, they are going to form anions or negative electrons. You should go ahead and write in the minus charge there, and over here on the cations, write in that plus charge. All right, so for these two examples, let's see if we can calculate what the charge is. When nitrogen forms a stable ion, um, the seven protons stay the same. We never mess with the protons because then we would change what element it is but it has gained electrons that has a grand total of 10 electrons. So this basically means the seven protons mean that we have seven positive charges and 10 electrons mean that we have 10 negative charges. Um, so sometimes I'll draw this out this way, four, five, six, seven, we have seven positive charges coming from those seven protons, and then we have 10 negative charges. Let me draw the little minus signs in on all of these. So notice that for seven of these negative charges, they're going to cancel out with the seven positive charges from the protons, but then we have three extra negative charges. So the overall charge 
on uh, the nitrogen ion is going to be three negatives. So we have three more electrons than protons. If instead we look at the calcium ion, we're going to have 20 positives and we're going to have 18 negatives. So 18 of our positive charges from the protons will cancel out with the electrons, leaving two extra protons. So you just have to think about the balance between protons and electrons. If you have more protons, you have more positive charges. And so when you subtract the two numbers, you'll have a positive charge. But if you have more electrons, then when you subtract the two numbers, uh, the charge that you have should have a negative sign. On this slide, let's try to work through the idea of the last slide, but in reverse. This time, I'm giving you the symbols and asking you to say how many protons and electrons there are. So if you look up chlorine on the periodic table, it's going to have 17 protons and it will also have 17 electrons. Um, if you have a neutral atom, the number of protons and the number of electrons is the same, and um, that number is given by the atomic number on the periodic table. But if we have chloride with a minus one charge, the electrons will have changed. So we still have 17 protons, because if we have any other number of protons, it would be something Else. It would not be chlorine anymore. And so if it has a minus one charge, it means it's picked up one extra negative charge, which means one extra electron. So it will have 18 electrons, 18 negative charges. If we look at the neutral atom sodium, its atomic number is 11. So that means it has 11 protons. And because it's neutral, it also has 11 electrons. The sodium ion, the Na with a plus one charge, well, it still has to have 11 protons or else it wouldn't be sodium. But now it has one more proton than electrons. So that means it's lost an electron and we only have 10 electrons. How many protons, electrons, and neutrons are in 199F minus one? Okay. Pause this recording, take a moment, and figure this out. All right, so let's see what we can come up with here. The atomic number, that number down on the bottom, is going to tell us that we have nine protons. If we look at the mass number, which is the top number, that tells us the total number of particles in the nucleus, which are protons plus neutrons. So to get the number of neutrons, we'll take 19, the number of particles in the nucleus, minus 9, which is the number of those that are protons, and that's going to give us 10 neutrons. And then let's look at electrons. This minus 1 charge means that we have picked up one extra electron compared to the neutral atom. So the neutral atom would have the same number of electrons as protons, which would be nine. The minus one ion has picked up one extra, so we're going to have 10 electrons. So out of these choices, the best one looks like answer B, where we have nine protons, 10 electrons, and 10 neutrons. Our objectives were to predict whether a given element will gain or lose electrons when it forms an ion. Uh, Nonmetals gain, metals lose. To calculate the charge of an ion based on the number of electrons and protons, we're going to subtract those two numbers. If we have more electrons, it's a negative charge. If we have more protons, it's a positive charge. And then to calculate the number of protons and electrons based on an ion symbol. If we have a negative charge, it means that we've picked up extra electrons. And if we have a positive charge, it means that we have lost electrons. 